welcome. And Brian Sensei, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm really honored to be here today. Thank you so much. And as Brian Sensei said, Koshinage is, is one of those techniques that can be kind of feel overwhelming and, and um, it might not even seem like the funnest technique. However, it has some really fantastic things to teach us about connecting our center directly to our partner's center, like literally touching our lumbar to their chushin, to their belly. And I love that about it. Um, and then, you know, we're going to, we're, we're the, the Koshinage movement and the hip movement for Koshi is intense. So we'll spend some time on it and then we'll kind of segue into a little bit of Kokinage and just examining uh, how to move our partner, not just with Koshinage, but with, with other techniques, specifically Kokinage. So uh, I always like to start with some O Sensei, bring his spirit here with us. And, welcome him into our practice. And this is gonna come from this book here. And uh, I love this one. I love all his writing, but often before a seminar, I'll take some time and it's just like, yeah, that's the one. And that this time, this really grabbed me. So he says, what is the universe? Who are you? That is what we want to know. If you find out about yourself, you will learn what the universe is. Aiki came into being with the creation of the universe. It is found in all things. God made men to, and women to be the communicators between heaven and earth. The inner spirit communicates with heaven. The outer body communicates with earth. Inner makes the outer. The inner spirit is that of heaven. If human beings forget how to communicate with their inner spirits, they only communicate with their outer bodies and the lines of communication between heaven and earth weaken. Saints and sages appear in the world to restore that communication between heaven and earth. And I think here when he's saying the inner spirit communicates with heaven, the outer body communicates with the earth. I think sometimes he's talking a little bit about uh, the movement of our practice is, is maybe sort of more like the earthy, the earth and the heaven are more like the spiritual elements or the things in our practice that we don't necessarily see, but we certainly feel them. I do. Yeah, I bet you guys do too. So I just, I love how he brings those two things together. And if at the end of today's session, you, you really like that and there's time, I'm happy to read it again. This other one I'm going to give you is directly connected. I just was, when I read it, I just thought, oh my goodness, that's all techniques, but really Koshinage. And this is, this is really cool. And we'll all, I'll be able to come back to this one and the drawing as we practice Koshinage. So he says, keep your movements circular. Imagine a circle with a cross drawn through it. Place yourself in the center and stand there confidently in a triangular stance, Hanmi, right? Link yourself to the key of heaven and earth, pivot around that front foot and guide your partner around that center. And I will read this one again, right before we go into Koshinage, but it's so, it's just so indicative of what we're gonna do with the Koshi. And I, I drew this for us. He's saying circle with a, draw a circle with, a, um, X through the middle, a cross through the middle. And in Koshinage, we happened, he said, we form a cross with our partner. Our hami forms a cross with our partner's hami. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get into some study time, some stretching time and uh, bow in. I really feel you all. I can, I can feel the energy building. Great feeling. I've gotten used to that kind of feeling everybody on Zoom so much even more than before the pandemic. I think it's one thing it's given me and maybe some of you that like, wow, we can feel each other. It's, it's more than time and space. We can feel each other's key.
case you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm just going to light the candle on the showman real quick. Bring in the, the fire element. We're going to bow twice and clap four times, bringing in heaven, fire, water, and earth. And those practices and those elements deeply into our body. Great. Okay, so I hope you have a Joe or some kind of stick to use. We're not going to use it immediately. I'm going to get you guys warmed up first. The stretches that we're going to do um, directly relate to Koshinage. So let's just start with, I'm going to actually go ahead and spotlight myself again so I can see what you guys see. There we go. All right. So Get your legs as wide as you can. Feel your center line from the crown of your head down the center of your body, the chakra system basically, and then down to the perineum and into the ground. And if you're able to take your center, your center line, your core around your stable center, your stable center is connected to the earth. One thing you can do with this one, change direction, is stick your belly out and draw it in. But really feel this core here and how your torso moves around that core. And the torso is moving because of the power in your core. Beautiful. All right. Give yourself a nice kotagaishi on your left wrist. I'm going to mirror you. Just nice stretch. And then stretch, 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 just like you're taking ukemi. Try to get a long stretch through the right side of your body and reach your left hand as far as you can. So here comes the koshi already. You're gonna take your right hand and reach it up to the sky. Reach your spine, your hips, the back of your head, your lumbar behind you. And take your eyes and sight up your fingers so you can feel heaven and earth. Your right side fingers are extending up into the sky. Your left elbow or your left arm is dropping into the earth. Kind of like a seated triangle pose. Okay, and now we're just gonna relax. Come around, take the left hand behind you and the right hand towards your foot and get the best stretch you can on that left leg. Good. And I always recommend letting your breath start to be deep now as we stretch. Using your mind and your breath, use your mind by projecting the breath into the places that might feel stiff for you. Project your breath, use your mind. And if you can't grab your foot, that's okay. Just let this right elbow drop towards the right knee and take the left hand and reach your key up into the sky and sight up and now use your breath in your mind and extend and let's take this left your uh, your for you guys at your right hand i want you to extend kokyu now you're turning the triangle pose into an aiki triangle pose your left hand is extending up into the sky there's a spiral happening and you're really stretching the uh, left side of your body and then take that left hand around and the right hand behind you. Once again, train yourself to use your breath and your mind, breathing deeply. Use your mind and imagine the breath going to the places that feel stiff. If you have a type of jai breathing or yoga breathing, you can, of course, use it there. 
All right, let's stretch forward a little bit, just for a moment. Feel the crown of your head, feel your center line, your core down the center of your body, all the way down below your belly button, which I'm gonna refer to as your chu shin, your middle spirit. All right, let's take our feet together, hands at our heart together, big deep breaths, reaching for your feet, breathing. Nice, take your feet together, draw them in toward you. Come up tall, again, feeling your center line, crown of your head, down your chakra system, press your knees down and come forward. Stretching out your hips. We're gonna be using our hips a lot in just a few minutes. All right, let's go into a little bit of ukemi. So kind of a little bit of ukemi, a little bit of stretching. Let your right leg tuck, put your left foot over the top. We're gonna to go off to the right and big leg over to the left. Now is the time to feel your center or your chushin, your core pressing your back into the ground. Some of you don't have mats. <laughs> I've gotten out of the habit of saying the mat. Can you feel, can you feel your center pressing your back into the ground? That's what keeps us connected. And then if you want to all the way around, nice and smooth by using your core to press your back into the ground. Use your core, feel your center. Good, and then find your way up. Now I'm tempted to do more ukemi. <laughs> Let's do one thing, okay? Let's get right hum me. And if you, some of you may or may not have enough space for this, but just try. Step back with your right foot. Go down on your right side, over to your left. Let the right knee fall and come up to your left hum me. We'll do it three more times so you can follow me. Left hum me, step back with the left foot, down on the left side. Over to the right, left knee falls, up and right on me. This time, pay attention to your posture. Down on the right, cross to the left. As your right knee falls, keep your posture and up to left on me. And we'll do one more back at the left. Down on the left side, use your arms, use your core, keep your posture. Beautiful. Okay. So now we're going to do a, a yoga pose. We're actually going to do the triangle pose which is directly related to Koshinage in a really beautiful way. What I want you to do, and, and this could be, it can be challenging. So just do your best and do your best not to judge yourself, okay? Okay, so I'm in a big left hami right now, and you guys are too. And you're gonna let your palms face your belly, same way as your belly. And different from Hami, your legs will be not locked, but not, not bent a lot like they are in Hami. And we're gonna let our body, and I want you to shift your weight over to the left. As though somebody were drawing on your left side fingertips and extend your key out through that left side, take the left hand and place it on the inside of the left foot. You know, in a yoga class, you might have blocks. So it's fine to grab your leg. If you can go to the floor with the left hand, Take the right hand and really spiral it up to heaven. Take the thumb like you're hitchhiking out and take your lumbar, your back, the whole back side of the body behind you. So mine is coming toward you all and yours is going back behind that. Your back body is really turned and, and your hips are turning and that's what's causing that. In Koshinage, we want to take this part of the body and connect it to our partner. So you got heaven with the right hand, and earth with the left. Take that right hand now and extend Kokyu. So it turns into Aiki Yoga. Good. Now, just to relax a little bit, we're gonna turn, let the right foot turn out of Hami, both hands on the ground, let your head fall. 
And we're going to go around to the other direction, which is a little more challenging for those of you who have never done it. Right hand on the inside of the left foot, left hand up. And again, using your hips and turning your lumbar behind you. Don't worry if you can't do it or, or if you feel like it's not perfect because mine isn't either. Just the idea of it and the principle of the hip movement. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's just sink into the perineum. Let the back heel come up. So your key goes down, your, your center goes down and your hands are gonna extend up and extend coquille with your hands. So you got heaven and earth going on. Good, let's go to the other side. Big right on me, palms facing me. Extend, drawing out through the right side fingertips, bring your right hand on the inside of the right foot and sight up the left hand. Now this is the part we really, this is the part that connects totally to Koshinage. Turn your left hip back. And when you have your partner, it'll be even easier. Turn your lumbar behind you. And then take the left hand and really extend it up into the heavens and sight up that hand. Turn it into Koku for just a moment. Good. Come over and just get a nice stretch in the right foot. Both hands on the ground. Left hand on the inside of the right foot and turn the hips again. Turn your right hip behind you. This one's even a little more challenging. Of course, breathing all the while. Using your mind. And we're gonna drop this, the perineum or your core. Extend your key up, extend Kokyu, feeling heaven and earth. We, as O Sensei often would say, we are standing on the floating bridge of heaven or he said, first you must stand on the floating bridge of heaven. We're working on that, right? We're right between earth and heaven. All right, we're gonna jump right into Koshinage now. So what I would like you to do is get a pair of shoes and your Joe and bring them on out and set your shoes, set your shoes up into a right hami. Okay, later on, we, we can take the shoes out and the Joe out and you can just see what works best for you. So you got your shoes in a right on me and see, I've got those shoes facing my showman a little bit at an angle. So you're gonna be able to see my partner. So this is Lisi San here, Lisi Baldwin. And she has been my partner throughout the pandemic over here on the ice loss. I'm really grateful to her for helping me this whole year. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna be doing, okay? And I'm gonna use Lisi so that you can kind of get your Koshinage bearings for a moment, all right? So there's that right hami. Lisi's gonna come into a right hami. And you could imagine that this would be a very basic Koshinage, that it would come something like from Katate Dori and through and through, okay? but. Since most of you don't have partners, and those of you who do, of course, you can use them. Try it without for a little while first, even if you have a partner. Can you hike up your hakama, um, you see? So my partner's in a right hami, and you can watch me or you can, you can try this along with me, but I will take you through it again in just a moment. So we are toe to toe, I'm in left hami, she's in right hami. I'm holding my Joe in my left hand. And what I'm gonna do is already start studying her third point where balance gets taken very easily through that place, right? It doesn't take much on the back and in the front, especially if we are sensitive with our hands. It's just, it's just tipping onto the toes and tipping onto the heels. Um, so what's happening here is um, I'm gonna take the Joe, which I have in my left hand, and I'm gonna place it directly at her third point, right between my two shoes. I'm gonna take my back foot and my back hand forward. My back hand is thumb down, and I'm bringing my right foot. So I'm in left on me now. I'm bringing my right foot in, and it's gonna to connect to the Joe. We're gonna put the, we're gonna put the uh, computer right on that so you can see it in a moment. So my, my foot's crossing the Joe. And I've now made a left hami crossing her 
right hominy. And there's the cross I form with my partner. And here, and there's the koshi. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our Joe across our back. And we're gonna bring the other hand and draw the Joe through. Because it's really important. I'm gonna throw Lacey on the other side real quick, come into your left hominy. Okay, let's go right here. It's really important that this top hand, this hand here, as I finish the koshi, it comes all the way through. So I've made that circle. I finished and completed the circle, okay? <clears throat> so the idea is to feel her center and to feel her third point. Okay, I'm gonna do it once on the other side from a left hominy now, and then we're gonna start doing it together. You may already be doing it with me. So if she's in her left hominy, I'm holding the Joe in my right hand, I'm gonna take the Joe and put it directly at her third point so that um, there's that cross O sensei talks about form across your hummy forms across with your partner's hummy. Back hand and back foot come all the way in and match that foot up with the Joe. And this is like I'm reaching down for her ankle, but I'm actually coming down the Joe. I'm coming, let's move this way just a slight bit. I'm moving down the Joe reaching up. So I've got left hand in earth, right hand in heaven. And then if you don't have a partner, you're going to take that Joe. You're going to bring it across your back. You're going to shift your weight and turn your hips and draw your partner through. So that drawing through is really important. The hips are shifting and turning. All right, let's try it now. So let's uh, put your own shoes in a right hominy. Put the pair of shoes in a right hominy. Okay. Hold your Joe in your left hand, your toe to toe with your pair of shoes. Take the Joe and put it at the third point right between that pair of shoes. Take your right hand thumb down Take your right foot all the way in and match it up to the Joe. Lisey, can you uh, take the computer and just what we were doing last week, you know, just push it down until they can totally see what's going on. So for anybody who's a beginner with the Koshi, they can totally see this specific thing right here. See that? Putting it in, coming around. And there's my Hummy. So this back foot, back hand, come all the way in and around. And there's my left hummy, and it's right crossing with their, I mean, there's my left hummy, it's crossing with their right hummy. I'm gonna shift my weight, I'm gonna turn my hips, I'm gonna bring the Joe across my back and all the way through. And when I bring it all the way through, this hand, as it comes, brings it through like this, okay. So let's do that side again from a little bit more of a distance. One more time, we're gonna take it really slow for the next five or seven minutes and then we're gonna add some fun stuff to it. Okay, so just be patient with yourself. Your shoes are in right hommy, you are in left hommy and you're gonna pick up your Joe and put it right between those shoes. Third point, your partner's front third point, okay? Right hand and right foot come together. Your right thumb goes down. Take your right foot in, match it up with the Joe. Bring the left foot all the way around. Here's that triangle pose. So we're gonna exaggerate. Let your hips turn toward your partner, toward the Joe. Connect the Joe to your center. Really feel the connection. Now, just like it's Velcroed together. And as you move, so do they. Mm. Because you're, you're shifting your weight and then you're turning your hips and you're drawing them through, okay? So Lisi, come on over for just a moment. Now she's gonna stand right here in her left hommy. And look, I just finished my throw and I am ready. I'm just gonna load her up. I am totally ready with my hips and my hommy. Let's show them this to do the other side. Okay, so let's go to the other side now. Thank you. Now you're gonna put those shoes in a left hommy. Okay, put the shoes in a left hommy. 
find the third point, take a look, where's that front third point? I'm in right hummy, my shoes are in left hummy. I'm holding the Joe in my right hand. I'm gonna pick up the Joe and put it right at the third point. I'm gonna take my back foot and see how my hips are moving here. I'm already warming them up. My left thumb goes down. I bring the left foot and I touch the Joe to the part of my foot that's just above my heel towards my toes. And look, I'm in a right hummy now. I'm crossing those shoes. And crossing my partner, reaching the sky and the heavens with your right hand, you're in your right hummy. Feel the connection with your lumbar and the Joe, or if you're with a partner, your lumbar and their belly, their two shin. As you shift your weight, bring them with you. Take your right hand on top of the Joe, turn your hips and shift your weight. This is really important because when we throw somebody we want their body, it's like this is a cliff. We don't wanna leave the knee here at all because then they can fall into it. We wanna shift our weight completely. I'm aware that there's another, there are many ways and styles to do koshinage. There are people who will come in, throw and bring the feet together. That's, it's very similar though. The hips are doing the same thing. We're still connecting with our partner in the same way. So let's continue a little bit slower, slow for a few more times. I'm gonna face the way you're facing now. My, uh, my partner is in right hum me again. Okay, I'm gonna go a little bit at an angle. Oops, that's a left hum me. <laughs> I get confused with the shoes. Partners in right hum me. You are toe to toe with your partner. You're going to take the Joe, which is in your left hand, pick it up put it at their third point. Take your right hand and your right foot and step in. Get that heel connected to the Joe. Bring the left foot all the way around. This is the hummy that's so important. It crosses my partner. Reach up with your left hand, reach down with your right. Connect your lumbar to their chu shin. Get the Joe on your back, shift your weight over to the left foot. Turn your hips, draw your left hand through. Beautiful. I'm gonna do it one more time, a little closer. And I'm gonna do that side again, okay? Just to get you super duper comfortable before we do some fancier stuff. I hope you guys can see this right hum me. We, we sort of played around with it, make, to try to find ways that you could see it. Okay, so left hum me, holding your Joe in the left hand. Pick the Joe up, put it at your partner's front third point, right hand, right foot, step on in, make a left hummy. The, the reason this first foot is so important is that when I place this foot somewhere, my hips follow. We do, a, we do a walking practice at my dojo where we place feet, hips turn. Place feet, hips follow. So let's come back to the beginning, even if you were right in the middle. I wanna stress that before we go on. Put the Joe at the third point. When you bring your right foot in, turn it so that it's facing the same way as your hum is the person's hummy. Your foot faces with that foot. And then when you bring the left foot around, there's your left hummy, which crosses theirs. Reach down for the ankle or the Joe with your right hand. Shift your weight. Turn your hips. Bring the Joe. This is the important part. Grab the Joe over the top. Turn your hips all the way through and bring the Joe through because that's your partner. Okay, we're gonna do one more now. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna stay in this <clears throat> vicinity, but I'm gonna switch to right hummy. You can see the other side of my body. Shoes are in left hummy, I'm in right hummy. I'm holding the Joe in my right hand. I'm gonna pick it up and put it just at my partner's third point, stepping in with the left foot and the left thumb is down all the way around. Look at that right hummy. It totally crosses my partner. It's formed a cross with them. Up to heaven with your right side, down into the earth with your left. Take the Joe across your back, shift your weight and turn your hips. All right, now we can, if you want to, you can keep the Joe, you can keep the shoes or you can get a partner or Imagine you have a partner, okay? We're gonna go into katate dori 
koshinage. Really nice basic way of doing it. I'm gonna go a little bit at an angle so you guys can see what's happening with our feet, okay? You can do it with me if you'd like, or you can watch. So she's grabbing katate dori with her right hand. I'm gonna to come to the inside, just like kokudosa, okay? Spiraling in and up. As I step in front of her, I want to cover center. I wanna feel her center line. So I'm gonna do an atemi, a back fist with my right hand. It goes to her head, just very lightly and gently and down her body like this. Back of my hand is going from here to here and it's following her center line. Okay, now just like when you had the Joe, take your back foot or your right foot and make it the back foot to a left hami and bring that left foot all the way around. Let's back up. Lisi's a bit taller than me. I want you guys to see her. So here I am, I'm left hami and I'm crossing her right hami. I'm gonna shift my weight and draw her onto my center, turn my hips, follow all the way through. You see what happened with this arm and this arm. Okay, we're gonna do the other side from here. She's in left hami, I'm in right hami. I go kokyu dosa, I travel to her center line. Really feel the center line. My left foot goes all, you see I'm, I'm examining her third point. That's what makes this really special. I'm examining where her center is. My lumbar touches her, her chushin. Ooh, God, I feel her center. Those of you who don't have partners, you're gonna really feel this when you get back in your dojo, feel their center, okay? And now as I shift my weight onto this right foot and I draw her across me, I turn my hips, come all the way around. And you see now I'm ready for the other side. There you go. Yeah, ready for the other side. There we go. And I can just boop. Now I'm ready for the other side. So it's a shift and a turn and the, the hips the chushin, the lumbar, this whole part of your body connects to this whole part of your partner's body. Okay, so let's try without a, I'll do it without a partner. I'm gonna face the way you're facing. And if it helps, if it helps you keep the shoes in there, if not, just start to move. So you're being grabbed katate dori. Left hand goes to the outside like kokyudosa. You step in, your right hand goes all the way down their center. Remember to turn that right foot all the way around. Bring the left foot around. Ah, my center is touching her center. Heaven with the left side, earth with the right. Shift my weight, turn my hips. Okay, let's do the other side. So I'm, I'm going the same direction as you all, but a little at an angle so you can see me a bit better. She's grabbing katate dori. I go kokyudosa. Come right through her center with my left hand, the back of the hand down her center, the left foot steps all the way in, the right foot comes around for a hami. See, now my center is turned towards my showman into my partner's chushin or belly. Shift my weight, turn my hips. <laughs> really fun stuff, okay. So um, we're gonna move on in a okay. moment. All right, so now let's, let's get it a little more dynamic, all right? So now we're imagining, because we have that first part, we're gonna imagine our partners coming for shomenuchi, okay? And all, I want you to make the moves pretty big. So your partner comes for shomenuchi and as they go up, you go up, as they go down, you go down and through, and there's your koshinage. They go up, you go up, you go down, you go down, and your koshinage. Hopefully that just got you a little bit inspired, okay? We're gonna take it from Munetsky as well. I'll go at a different angle. My left palm is going up as I go to Tenkan. Because she's an uke, she wants to come around and find me, to punch me perhaps. But first I go into her center, make the connection with the Koshinage. Okay, and just one more, here we go. Ooh. Okay, I know it sounds like a big, bad, horrible, uncomfortable fall. We can take soft ukemi. But it's nice for her to just land so you can kind of get, oh yeah, there it was. All of these can be turned to kokunake. And we will do that in just a little while. So let's try, let's try from shomenuchi, okay? Let's get right hami. 
the idea is with Shomenuchi's, we really want to feel the awase. We want to feel our partner before they've begun to attack. So feeling them, feel coming up as they come up, coming down as they come down, become one with them, make a path for them. The throw is the least important part. So you come around, you're gonna take that left foot all the way back around in front of them. Reach up with your right hand, down with the left. Shift your weight, turn your hips. Beautiful. Let's do the left side. We come for Shomenuchi. As they go up, we go up. Left palm is up, Tenkan. You're gonna draw them out a little bit to the left, just like you're about to do Kokunage. Take the right hand and the right foot, come right between your partner's hamni, turn that right foot towards your own belly. Bring the left foot around, sight up the left hand, down with the right, shift and around. Let's go a little bit quicker. So here they come, Shomenuchi Tenkan, around, in, all the way around and through. And left side, they go up, we go up, Tenkan, around, through, and in for your Koshinage. Okay, imagine a Munetsuki now. So say exactly the same, exactly the same body movement, okay? So they come in, we feel them before they get to us. We feel, we become one, we make a path for them. And now the throw, while it's nice, it's not the most important thing. The, the body placement and the connection to our partner that we wanna feel. From left hami, they're punching, ten con. Open them up a little bit, step into their center line. Shift your weight, turn your center. So before we go on, we have a lot of time and I wanna just find out if anybody has questions that you need in order to feel like you're getting this. Anybody lost? And while those questions are happening, you're all welcome to keep moving around. You don't have to feel like you're being rude if you're not coming over to listen to the answers. I have one question. Yeah. Yes. I noticed that my impulse is that after the throw being directed towards where Uke should be. But if I following you properly, if I am able to follow what you're doing, you are slightly turned away from where Uke is landing. Ah, uh, so could you say the first part again? I have an impulse. I'm not sure yeah. that I would do that with an Uke, but I think so. But I'm not sure since I don't have anyone to practice with. But yeah. I, I feel that my impulse is to turn in some way so that I can look at Uke. Ah, uh, you mean at the end? In the end, yes. Ah, uh, gotcha. Okay, yeah, let's mm -hmm. take a look at that. So, um, at least he's going to come in with, uh, say, Munetsuki. And I'm around. Let's get over so they can see us. And I'm here and I'm through. You're saying you want to look at her right here. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Okay. And yet I'm looking here. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Exactly. Okay. So Koshinage is one of those throws, at least when I learned it from my teachers, where you want to just keep going, right? I know I'm saying, ah, now I'm ready to do the other side because my yeah. hips turn so much. But in fact, this is what happens with Koshinage. I'll try to stay in frame. So here, I'm here, I'm here. Right? This is one of the things that Koshinage is about. You get them, you get them whatever the throw from whatever attack, you get them and you're like, I'm going. Yes. Okay? I don't think there's anything, it's, it's like Rondori, come get me. We don't, we don't usually follow, right? We, yes. we let them go, we let them go, we let them go, we pass. We almost ignore them like, oh, I'm going to the next person. It's, it's a technique that's kind of like that. Hmm. But I don't think there's anything wrong, Morote. I don't think there's anything wrong with looking at them. No problem. Come this way a little bit, Lisi. As long as if you're gonna stay here, you're in a safe place. See, I'm, I'm right here. I have her arm. I can pin her, not my knee. I could put it on her. So 
And I agree with you looking up, it's like, wait a minute, I'm not focused on my partner. Yes. There's totally nothing wrong with looking at her. And here, I'm even looking at her, but my hips have already come through. Yeah. And as you get more and more comfortable with Koshinage, any uh, morote, how about? As you get more comfortable with Koshinage, it's gonna be quicker in your hips. The hip movement will be smaller, hmm. right? But yes. I like your question. Yeah, you can hmm. look at them totally. How'd the Joe help you guys? Did that Joe movement help you to really understand the, the connection between the hip and your partner's center? That's my hope and desire. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, let's move on. I think we've, I think, oh, do we have another question? Okay, we're gonna move on. And um, just to revisit O Sensei and think about what we've just done in this, this picture of the circle and the going through it, we were standing in our hominy right there at our partner's center. We were drawing them around us. So he says, Keep your movement circular. Imagine a circle with a cross drawn through it. Place yourself in the center and stand there confidently in a triangular pose. Link yourself to the key of heaven and earth, which we did, and pivot around the front foot, which we also did, and guide your partner around that center. We guided them around our own center. So, I mean, I, he's talking about every technique there but I just thought it was a really nice connection to Koshinage. All right, so let's, let's uh, segue now into some Kokunage. I'm gonna spotlight myself so I see what you see. Okay, so every time we do a, ko a Koshinage, it can be turned into a Kokunage. I'm sure you all know that already. Give me a uh, Shomenuchi. So I go to do the Koshinage and there's the Kokunage, right? Murote. I go to do the koshinage, there's the kokunage, right? What I want you to do, thank you so much, for just a moment is examine your own body, okay? So stand in your left hami. And what I want you to feel is just how easy it is for your balance to get taken to the front. And how little it takes for your balance to get taken to the back but really take a moment and feel this. You can even close your eyes, get yourself totally grounded and centered. What happens and where does your body go when you go onto your toes? Where does your body go when you go onto your heels? What is happening? And I'm hoping that what you notice is your weight goes right to your own center line. You don't lose your center by going onto your front foot or your back foot because those are our solid lines. Feel that, you lose your center at your exact center, going back and going forward. You lose your center, whoa, right? Okay, so now for those of you who have partners, you can play with that. And what I want you to do is do it in a very light way. We'll start with koshinage and then we'll, I mean, koshinage into kokunage, and then we're gonna go into another technique, okay? So for those of you who don't have a partner, of course, just keep using the shoes and the joe. That's, that's totally fine. You've got this, this partner, you can get the foot lined up. You can draw across your back, practice the koshinage. And then if you take it into kokunage, you can come through and bring their center down. But that's totally fine. Or if you're on your own, you can just do the movements. Okay, so imagine now we're gonna get in our left hami. So what I'm saying is if you need to keep working on that koshi with the joe, go for it. If you wanna come forward with me into some other stuff, come with me. Okay, left hami. She's coming for Shomenuchi. We go up when she goes up, down when she goes down. 
Follow through the center, step through with your right foot and draw your partner down. Okay, so she's, I'm in right hami. She goes shomenuchi, I follow her up and down. Everything we did with Koshi is still important. Covering center as we go through, turning the hips. It's just instead of stepping there, we're gonna go through. Okay, what I want you to do as you go into the kokunage is when you go to, to quote throw, be strong, Lisi. Our tendency is to just, you know, pull with the arm, all of us, because we're human. What I want you to do is feel the whole thing coming from your body. And this little light touch that we have runs from our body, through our arm, through her arm, through her center. And all we need to do is feel her center. I don't even have to step. I just, just like water flowing. Okay, so you're just gonna try that kokunage a few times, up and down and through and drop. If you don't have a partner, you might like to try coming through and dropping to your knees, if your knees can handle it. You're just letting everything drop. Everything, just like water flowing, okay? Just like Koshinage and through. This drop, very important, not a pull. Feel your partner, feel them, good. We're gonna do one more of those. Feel her center, okay. I'm gonna go into another Kokunage now, so keep as you don't have a partner, keep being aware of that place where your balance tips so easily, okay? So <clears throat> he's gonna come for Shomenuchi again. This time we're not gonna go under. We're just gonna do regular, regular old Kokunage, okay? So we go Tenkan, move out of her way because she wants to come in on us. And right here, again, our tendency often is to try to step way back here, right? But remember, she's strong and she's strong here. I really wanna feel that place where she's gonna tip. I wanna feel that spot with a light touch. So she goes up, I go up, she goes down, I go down. I feel that with a light touch. Try a couple of these where you don't even step through. Let's face the camera. You're here and you just feel and drop. Without a partner, what you're gonna do is let the hand spiral, let the hip spiral. It's a little bit more challenging, of course, a lot more challenging to feel like you're moving something when there's not a person there, but just let the hips turn and the hand drop. So the body movement for this kokunage is gonna be from left hami into tenkan, just moving out of the way and dropping them into their own hole. From the right side, they go to shomen up with them and down with them out of the way and spiraling and dropping them into that hole. The first koshinage, kokunage, was to come under them and drop from tenkan around and under them and drop. But with a lot of attention to the subtlety of your touch, even without a partner, your, your light touch and how you can drop them into their own third point, their own hole. Yeah. Could, you just, could you show the, uh, this technique with a partner again? Absolutely. With the, the one Kokunage that starts. One. Yeah, the one that starts like Koshinage that goes under her, or the one that just moves off the line and in? Uh, the one you just didn't know. Sure. Okay, so she wants with a partner. So she comes for Sho Menuchi. I'm in my left hummy. Awase, I, I follow her up and down move into Tenkan, 
And there, here, I want to move through her center, just like I did with the Koshinage. And then here, taking her center is going to be uh, feeling, in this place, feeling her back third point. So the other one went under her and feeling her front third point. And with both of them, the important thing is here. So as I went under, cover center. I don't want to give her my back without covering center through. This is the important part. I want to not be strong. I don't want to pull her onto her front leg. I want to feel where she is and like water drop through. And I think the one Jacqueline Sensei you were asking about was this one here, cover center again, and already have her stretched here. And I feel her third place, I feel her third point, I feel her hole. And I could step or not. Is that helpful? Very helpful. So you drop her in the front hole first and then in the back hole uh, second. Exactly, yeah. So we're, we're, we're studying the back and the front hole. <laughs> Exactly. And you know what? I, what's in, amazing is we actually have time. We're gonna we're gonna study the back and the front hole with Edie Minage now. If you guys would like to, got about twenty minutes. It wasn't. It was just a a little plan if there was time. Light touch is what's so important here. Throughout the pandemic, I have found that. You know, with the training I've been doing with Lisi and a few other people, we all know this, advanced people, when we grab really hard, we can't feel anything, right? When we're light, we can feel our whole partner's body from head to toe. Are there any other questions about the Koshinage or the Kokunage before we move on? Yeah, Jody. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, the question is for the Koshinage and the Sumiotoshi that you're doing. Sumiotosh, yeah. So is there a sense that you're continuing to draw Uke forward or encourage their movement forward as you're loading them up on the hips? Yes, definitely. Really good question. There's some subtleties that happen in Koshi. And that is a beautiful question. We're, we're definitely, um, I'm going to do it from a different attack. Just how about Ushido? Here she's coming around and forward. I want to keep her moving forward. I think that's what you're asking. Or even the one we did from Katate, come in motion. I want to continue moving her forward. Let her keep going. Is that what you asked, Jody? Yes, yeah, exactly. Definitely. And then the other question that was asked about looking at your partner. It's a very interesting question because here she comes, here she comes, here she comes, here she comes. I, I can look at her and my hips can do all the same work. If I look at her, I can pin her. <laughs> I can do a really strong pin right now. Or I can go through and keep moving. And they're both options. But your question, Jody, I love because Riote, yes, keep her going, keep her going, keep her going. That was kind of a high up on my hips, but yeah, I like that question. Um, that answer so, it. <laughs> yes um i was just thinking in terms of the dynamics between you and okay after you've done the atemi and their center line yeah and for me it feels like that brings uke's energy back on the heel so then you're really going to have to work to keep that energy going forward in the direction that you want to encourage them to go into the pro yes Yes, it's sort of like, you know, again, like a Rondori Kokunage. We want to encourage them with our mind. I want to encourage her to go. My mind goes up, uh, bring her up, down. I'm encouraging her to keep going. I'm not stopping her, her uh, energy. So do you so feel like the energy of the Otemi should actually bring Uke's energy up their center line rather than make them go back squarely. On oh, no, I was just sort of likening it to, to, to other, some other techniques and specifically with Brandori. I, in this case, she's coming forward. I don't wanna just go down and stop her. I want right. her energy to keep going forward. But with my mind, I drew her up, down and she kept moving forward. 
right. maybe a better one is to let her keep going. So let me have that hand with Koshinage. She's walking, 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 and I let her keep going forward. Yeah. I think in Aikido, often um, Bell's theorem is a good, a good way to go. Things that are in motion tend to stay in motion. I like that question, not to stop the motion. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we could spend a lot more time on the Koshinage for sure. There's a lot of details here. But I'm going to give you guys a little, little flavor of um, something I've been working on. Um, just a little tiny flavor with, with Iri Minage, okay? And we'll just, we'll do it, we'll do it with each other. All about light touch again. So um, those of you, for, just for a moment, those of you who don't have a partner, get, pick up your Joe. Okay, uh, Lucy, can you come in a hummus? Okay, just pick up your Joe. And if you want, you can set up the shoes, doesn't matter. But what's important is you're just, again, studying their front third point and their front hole and their back hole. And Nidimi Nage is awesome. I mean, Nidimi Nage is the lifetime technique, right? So. I'm, if you don't have a partner, you can just be, I'm in left hummy, she's in right hummy. This time, take the Joe and put it at the back third point. If you've got your pair of shoes set up. And then pick up your Joe. I'm using her so you can see it. And her, the Joe is my partner's spine. We're gonna start with the one most people are a little less familiar with and just not pull, just feel that back third point and let it let that Joe come into your right shoulder. Connect it to your core line. You're now going to spiral up with your right hand. You're going to draw the right hand up and the left hand down right through her center line and step through. So just like Koshinage, we're studying her center and her hami. I'm going to do that once on the other side. Set your shoes up if you want to, if you want to use the shoes. Set them up in a left hami. And you're, I'm in right hami. I'm going to pick up, I've got my Joe in my right hand. I'm going to put it at the back third point. I'm going to get my whole body in there with an Edimi blend. My belly is right behind my partner's belly, behind their, their lumbar. Okay? And I'm, <clears throat> if she were standing here in her left hami, if she's standing in her left hami, I can take this Joe with my right hand and just put it on her spine. And I'm gently going to draw her into my left shoulder. So for those of you who don't have a partner, take the Joe into your left shoulder. Let your, let your core spiral to the right and down. Bring your left hand spiraling up and step through. Okay. So we'll, we'll try it in motion. A lot of you have partners, which is really cool. And if you don't have a partner, I hope that that made sense for you. People without partners, I'm gonna take you through it one more time with a Joe, okay? So your shoes are in a right hami, you're in left hami, you're holding the Joe in your left hand. Put that Joe right at their back third point. Step in with your right foot and your right hand. Grab their collar with your right hand. Draw their balance into your left shoulder. Spiral up with the left side down with the right and step through. And you can play with that as much as you want to. You of course can start to just take it into some motion. We're gonna spend, is that clock really right? This is pretty amazing. We, we have so much time today. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, we're just gonna spend a little more time on this, examining the front and the back third point and the balance point in your partner. So, um, if you have a partner, we're looking at the back third point. I'm in my right hami, okay? And she's gonna come and strike with her right hand. And I just follow her up and down and get my belly right behind her. I'm going to find center and gently feel her spine and take her into my right shoulder. Spiraling up with the right side and down with the left and stepping through. And for any of you who are feeling overwhelmed, you can stick with the Koshinage and the Kokinage. It's just a little bonus practice in Irimi Nage. 
So from left Hamni, she comes in, we follow her up and down. We get our core right behind her core. And we spiral down her spine and up her spine. We're going down her spine in the back and up her spine in the front and through. So just try some free movement. Try some Idi Minage, getting behind your partner, feeling their back third point with your hips, getting your hips behind their core. Mm. <laughs> Hopefully that's making sense for you. It's like the beginning of Ikkyo. She comes to strike with her left, woman left Hami, and I get my core behind her. Get my, just like with Koshinage, I get my Chushin behind her lumbar. Koshinage, you got your lumbar in front of her Chushin. Spiral down and up with your center. Thank you. So we're, we're examining the back third point. Yes. Julie, how's it working to use the Joe as your partner? What? <laughs> Is that a thumbs up? Oh, good. Cool. So the important thing on this one is that you're getting your belly when you step in behind their third point. <clears throat> and some of you are still working on the Koshi, which is great. Oh, that's nice, Julie. Blossom, that looks beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice, Jacqueline. So, so if you just take a quick look here, everybody, take a quick look. The emphasis just now was on coming behind her and taking the back third point, right? And I love it because there's, the throw is almost unnecessary. So I'd like you all to try spiraling up. And that looks like this. So I go, I go in and get behind and this left hand is not throwing. I'm not trying to throw her. I'm spiraling up with the left and down with the right. And she just, shoots through a lot of the time. So with um, the other direction, get your body behind, spiral up. So we are feeling, becoming one, making a path. We're making a path for her. And the front third point one would be going here. Then it turns to the back third. We're just going right for the back. And this hand travels up. One more time, it's almost like strike. Ow! <laughs> okay, but the feeling is that my belly got behind her center and drew spiraling down through her back and up to her front. Thank you. Thank you. Try that. The quote, throwing hand spirals up. It doesn't try to push and throw your partner down. And it will really bring your hips through. Was that a thumbs up, Jody? You like that? Cool. I'm so glad. It's all about our center, everybody. It's all about our center. Use your mind. Use your mind to spiral up. And your koku hand can spiral. One hand goes down and one hand goes up. Heaven and earth. If anybody needs to see something or has a question, please feel free. So say I got a question. Yes. You are entering usually. What about if you allow the part to come into your space so you step back, obviously offline? How would that be? You mean more like come strike? More like here? More stepping back. Or I step back when she strikes? No way. Oh, yeah, you're, you're talking about this? Yes. That's the front third point, and we have five minutes to look at it. So that's exactly what's next. 
the the back third point. Can you get that picture of Sofa Sensei? The back third point is much. We don't practice it as much, but it's got this wonderful double helix that happens immediately, right? Where our body gets. You can see it in this picture. I couldn't even turn my hips. He had me so firmly through. So he went. He went directly behind me. And this hand sometimes would travel up, sometimes would throw, but and this hand is drawing me down and through. See where his hips are? Just, just got behind me. So it's it's another way to look at Idi Minage. And what's really cool, and I'll get I'll, I'll leave you guys with some something to, to look at, think about and practice, is what we just studied, what we just sort of, you know, like a little hors d'oeuvre of it. What we just studied was back, getting behind, right? We got, I feel her back already. Boom, already back there. She's already down. I don't have to throw. It's, it's this feeling. Okay, now, front third point is the one that most of us are much more familiar with. And that one goes here and still travel, if I feel her spine, but here the light touch goes to her front rather than to her back. It goes to her front, which makes her go down onto her toes. Because she's human, she likes to stand back up. And guess what? Now it's just like the back third point. Turns into the back third point. So if you'd like, we have about four more minutes and you can try this. People without a partner, I've been teaching it to my students. You can feel the Joe. You step in and you draw it forward. And then it comes back up to your shoulder and you're up and down. I'll show you. I'll show you with a person. So the back third point was here. He's behind and up, right? We spiraled up. The front third point, we take her front at first. And as she, I'm going to bring it down again. I don't want to pull her up. I want to let her come up like a basketball. I just want to follow her. I bring her down. I follow her up and then I disappear behind her. And it's just like back third point. It ends the same way as the other one. So try it on your own a little bit with or without a partner. Now you're going to tip your partner forward. Tip them forward. As they are forward and down, they're human. So they like to stand up, let them stand up and then draw them in to your core or your shoulder and spiral in and up. Is that making sense, everybody? Is that, is that catching you? Is it making sense? Yay, I see Julie and Blossom, yay, and, and, and Jody Sensei, that makes me really happy. The thing about the front third point is we don't wanna to try to control them. We don't wanna to try to push and pull. We want to gently tip them. And as they come up, we follow them up and then we connect them to our core. And we have the very same move we, we started with, with the back third point. And once you in your dojos and you all have partners. Yeah, um, so Daniel, Daniel Brooks, sensei, I don't know if you're a sensei, I'm just gonna watch you for a minute and see how it's going. I'm just taking a look at you. I didn't want you to, wanted you to know about that. Down yeah, there's the back, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. I'm just finding that the lighter my touch, the, the less I think about throwing, the better. The throw is secondary. My favorite, one of my favorite teachers, Mito Sensei says, feel, become one, make a path, don't throw. So I'll do a few with my partner. You guys can do some with yours and then we might even have a minute or so for questions. So if you wanna watch, you're welcome to. If you wanna keep moving, go for it. Movement is good. We're not getting enough of it these days, right? So the back third point comes in and up. And then the front third point draws her to the front. She's human, she likes coming up, and turns to the back. And just a little 
little uh, recap on the Koshinage. When you're practicing, you can try from Katate Dori. You can set up the shoes, the Joe, or with a partner. Remember, you want to form a cross with your partner's body, bringing that back foot all the way around. So now my hami really crosses her hami. Shift and turn. And when you practice koshinage, you don't have to throw. You can also just load them up. You get this really nice, you know, feeling of turning the hips, shifting the weight. And then if they want to take the fall, you can you can do it. So thank you. We did a lot, you guys. Had more time than I thought we'd have. All right. So, you know, so much of what we do in Aikido is, is about feel it connecting, connecting to our opponent and our partner. Um, I went and studied a little bit of karate for a while and same thing, the, the, the teacher was masterful, but often karate looks like, you know, punching and disconnecting. But even there, it was all about softness maintaining connection, moving with. As we become more and more familiar with our techniques, we don't have to pay as much attention to this is where hands and feet always go, but more the subtlety of touching and feeling my partner's whole body and using my mind to direct them. So just some things to keep in mind. All right. Let's do some kokudosa together. So come on over to the screen. I'm gonna put my hands out and what I'd like you to do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be nage and you're gonna grab my wrists. And if you can, feel your, uh, your power point, your laogong point really connect in softly. Feel that connection through here, lots of power there. I'm gonna expand into your palms. I'm gonna keep that expansion. You're gonna press back a little bit. I'm gonna spiral in and up. I'm gonna take you guys to your left. I'm gonna take my right hand into your wrist and my left hand into your center. And I'm just gonna move you gently to your left. I'm not pushing, I'm just I'm feeling your body. So the other side. Get those laogong points connected into me so I can extend into your palms and feel your whole body becoming receptive, spiraling in and up, extending you to your right, into your wrist, and into your center. Great. I'm going to grab you now. You're offering your hands are, um, try this just for the heck of it. This would be positive, or I mean, sorry, receptive, positive, try neutral for now. I'm gonna grab, and you're gonna expand into my palm. And I'm gonna feel you and press back a little bit, becoming totally receptive. Your palms come up, spiral in and up, drawing my elbows up and knees down. Take me to your left this way. Yeah, nice. And the other side, expanding your wrists into my laogong point, turning your hands receptive, which draws my elbows down if I want to stay connected, spiral in and up, take your right hand into my left wrist and your right left hand into my center and take my balance. Nice. All right, very nice. Um, I was just quick. I was uh, had a wonderful conversation with one of my closest, dearest colleague friends, Linda Holiday, and and she was saying, you know, the most important things to her in her practice are connection and gratitude. So I just wanted to make sure to connect with each of you and tell you how grateful I am that that you came today and you took the time to to uh, see what I'm exploring. I'm not done. <laughs> I don't think we're ever done, are we? We're just we're constantly learning and growing. There's so much to learn. So I appreciate all of you for coming. Let's, um, let's just sit for 30 seconds and then we're gonna bow out.
Ray. どうもありがとうございました。